Hi, I'm Steve Green. Today we're going to be creating an early bound class library for CRM 2011. Um, what this enables you to do is obviously to reference entities um, within your code that are strongly typed, so you have the properties etc available at compile time for checking. So we'll begin by firing up a command prompt and what you need to do is change the directory to where you've got your SDK extracted. Mine's on the root of my C drive. Once I'm in the SDK folder, change directory to the bin folder. And within here, there's a utility called crmsvcutil.exe. It's this utility that we'll use to generate this early band class. So the syntax is crmsvcutil. You need to specify the URL for your organization web service. So in this case, it's an on-premise deployment. So I put the server name, organization name, in which in this case it's CRM demo. Then XRM services slash 2011 and then organization Ooh, helps if I type correctly then you need to define the output file name obviously you can include a path I'm just going to output it to the bin folder so I'll call it CRM demo early bound dot CS because it will be a C sharp file then the namespace Obviously you could put anything you like here, but if you want, you don't want to have to use an extra using reference within Visual Studio, you can match. I've, I've set up a, an empty plugin project here. So my namespace is crmdemo.plugins. So if I replicate that, when I add the file to Visual Studio, it, I'll immediately be able to reference the types without having to add an extra using statement. So if I type CRM demo dot plugins then one more thing I tend to do is create a service context name which enables you to instantiate um, the organization service context for this org for this specific organization uh, as, a, as an early band type and then you've got access to the various record set data sets uh, which I can show you shortly. So in this case, we'll just call it CRM demo context. Then, because I'm on a machine that's not joined to the domain, I need to specify a username and password. If you were on premise on an ent on a Active Directory domain and you were a deployment administrator, you would seamlessly authenticate without having to type a username and password. But I will have to type one. And then hit return. And that should connect to the web service and generate the relevant class library. This may take some time, so I'll put this on pause and come back to you. Okay, so that's now completed. That took a, a few minutes on my machine because I was down a VPN tunnel. Um, obviously, if you're on-premise, it would be significantly quicker. It's slightly server-dependent, and also online should be substantially quicker. Um, one point I did mean to make was, obviously, the username and password, if it was an on online deployment, obviously, you'd have to put your details in instead of the on-premise that I did. Okay, so we've now got uh, it's output to the bin folder of the SDK, this CRM demo early band class library. So if I go to my project under my plugins solution or well, project, I can add existing item. If I then browse to the location, C drive, SDK bin, I can see my early band class library, which I can now add. It's part of my project. 
So now if I, this is just a, a bare shell of a plugin, which obviously just creates the context and organization service, does some basic checks that the type of entity being passed in, well, the type of the target is an, is an entity, um, and obviously then extracts that, casting it into uh, an entity reference type. It also does a check that the target entity is account. Okay, so now instead of obviously if it was late bound, I'd have to do everything using the entity class. So if I wanted to create a new contact, I'd have to reference it by the um, logical name. So it'd just be a string. Likewise, any properties I wanted to define for that entity, I'd have to know what they were and the exact spelling. So, for instance, first name. So there's no compile time checking or IntelliSense for the properties of that entity. Where that differs with early bound is like I've now got a contact class. So I can now define along the same lines. I don't have to define the target entity. But now I have available all of the fields as properties of the class. So if I type, these will be the schema names. So I can now define in the same way. First name, Steve. And then both the late band contact class or the early band can be used in the create method. So I could pass that early band to the web service and that would create the record. Okay, thanks for listening.